Hello, everybody. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, uh, I be, since I'm the first talk, uh, I'll try to be intertemporally altruistic towards the rest of the people, <laughs> not take too much of their time, but probably a little bit, actually. So that's this is the way things go. Uh, so this is a joint work with uh, Marta Sarah Garcia, my colleague at UCSD, and Eilat's colleague as well. Um, so she unfortunately couldn't make it, but I'm happy to step in in her, her place. Um, so the basic idea here is that most of us in, have studied charitable contributions or altruistic behavior uh, as if it happens in one shot. And, uh, but in reality, there are, um, there are many times where there's a delay. You, you might make a decision today that has an impact on a gift that you'll make months or years later. Uh, how do we think about things where, there's, where you decide now for something that happens at some point in the future? Um, so uh, do these things have an impact? So we, we also notice that a lot of ins institutions for charitable giving involve these kinds of uh, delays, either explicitly by asking for pledges uh, or implicitly just because um, there's a, a, a bit of time lag between when you uh, uh, promise to give and, and give. Okay, so... Um, how, is, how important is it to the difference between committing now to give later or promising now to give later, which you might not always follow, follow through on, right? So these, these pledges can be non-binding non in the sense that they, they won't um, come after you if, you if you refuse to give. So an example of this kind of uh, giving structure was that uh, it, here, here at the Chicago uh, Business School, um, they asked uh, MBA students to donate to the school. They could either give now or pledge to give by the end of the year. And what they found was that 47% uh, say they'll give now, the 52% uh, pledged, but the pledgers promised more money. Okay. Now, of course, the, they didn't all give what they promised. So only about 40% of them followed through with their pledges. But um, you know, giving more than doubled, so you get more than twice the Money, about half the time, you, you, you know, it's, a, it's about breaks even. So it's a question of which of these effects are, are bigger. So how can we understand intertemporal giving uh, and why there's these effects? So in this paper, we're going to look at giving as an intertemporal choice. The, the distinction between deciding to give and giving as two separate events that you might get utility flows from. We're doing uh, exploration of the importance of commitment. And uh, we're going to, of course, do this in a controlled laboratory uh, study. So uh, there's a lot of uh, background literature on these kinds of uh, things. Uh, just a few brief ones. There's um, a little literature on avoiding the ask. You see somebody in your path who's going to ask you for charity, a lot of people go around that. Now what does that mean? That means saying no to charity is, 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 is a costly thing to do. Is a, you pay utility costs for saying no. So you're happier avoiding them altogether than passing by and saying no. So you're willing to pay a little cost to do that. So that's what that reveals to us. Um, there's been some work on decision times, but this is often about trying to force people to make quick decisions. So you put people under time pressure, turns out that they're more likely to say yes to, to giving. Okay, but this is like, you know, please, give, please contribute to the public good. You've got 20 seconds to decide. Go. Right? So that's kind of unrealistic for the kind of world we're thinking about. And charities, usually they, you know, they, they don't push you under that kind of time pressure. You get at least a two and a half minutes or three. No, you get a long time to sit and think and contemplate and, and make your budget plans and things like that. This paper by Anna Bremen uh, called Give More Tomorrow, based off of the Dick Thaler's famous work about Save More Tomorrow, where you get people to promise today they're going to save into the at some point in the future, and more people uh, get on the sign up for savings that way. And this was a, this was a plan to have people who are, have monthly deductions on their charitable contributions to sign up to get higher monthly deductions, the increase in monthly deductions, either in the next payment cycle on your credit card or two payment cycles away. When it's delayed by a month, they sign up more often. Okay. That was her, her result. So, um, so the setting, we want to induce this, uh, this uh, time variation uh, between the decision and the allocation of that decision. We want to vary our commitments to uh, giving, uh, following, following through on that. So the first treatment will be the give now. This is our sort of standard thing we decide. So 
we ask subjects in our experiment, would you like to give now? We give them, give them a little demonstration about a, a charity that we love to do experiments on at UCSD called Give Directly. And that's because one of my colleagues, uh, Paul Niehaus, was a founder of that organization. So we get to put his picture up, and you know, it sounds, seems very credible. And, it's, uh, and, and besides that, it's an awesome organization. Um, so we asked them to, uh, today whether they'd like to give some money out of their experimental payments to support Give Now. We asked for $5. Uh, give later is it's a they they're all everybody has to come back for uh, two weeks later or excuse me a week later to finish the experiment. We say you can decide now to pay out of next week's earnings that you're going to be paid for coming back for the second part of the study. And so that's the give later, but it's a commitment. You can't wiggle out of this one. But then there's the pledge where you can say now I promise that I'm going to I intend to give next next week, uh, and I'll confirm my decision for sure then. And so this is a pledge in the sense that you can you can fail to confirm your, your pledge in the future. And finally, we're going to say you can pledge today or, or give now, give immediately. Right? So uh, notice that oh, when you look at give later or pledging, pledging gives you more flexibility. So in a sense, that's better for you, unless you're going to be tempted to, to uh, not give in the future. Uh, so give now is, a, is adding that as an option, maybe uh, it provides you more convenience, you get it over with today, or maybe it is a disciplining device. That's what we uh, were thinking on that. So uh, the theoretical framework we're going to be using is a simple, uh, actually it's, a, it's almost embarrassing how simple this is, but it's uh, amazing how much distance we get out of this one simple assumption. So it'd be a simple discounting framework. Uh, so we'd say there's the utility that you get from giving, say W, uh, for say warm glow if you like. That's how much utility I'm going to get from my giving whole, my whole process of giving. But if I say no, I'm going to also pay a cost in saying no. That's un unpleasant to look at somebody's eye and say no. And if I give, I have to give some money, G, say, that, uh, that, I, that I was asked for. Now, when I'm pledging, I need to reflect there might be some uncertainty about the future. So I'll let G, I'll do that by making G, the utility cost of giving, be a random variable in the future. Okay, so I'll keep. W and N the same, but I'm going to let G be a random variable, the utility cost of giving. So that the, what matters is the relative cost of, of spending the money versus the utility from other sources. Okay, so uh, today G is known, in the future G is a random variable, but we'll, we'll set its expected value be, to be the same as, it's, as today's value, it's just so we don't cook the books one way or the other. Okay, so when do individuals experience the utility from giving? So if you're given two parts, I promise to give, I decide to give today, but actually it's part with the money tomorrow, I might divide my total utility experience into those two pieces. So we'll say you get deci decision utility at the time you decide to give. So, you, so there's, just like you hate saying no, you love saying yes. So you'll get a Y bond of utility today by saying yes, but we can't let people manufacture a utility endlessly by changing their minds. So we have to keep total utility constant. So uh, you'll get time when you gift is, at the, at the time the gift is carried out, you'll get utility UG, but we're going to make the utility from saying yes and the utility of giving labor later sum up to my total utilities if I'd given today. So I just get to divide that utility into two parts. I don't get to create extra utility. All right? And that's, that's a, this is the, the whole assumption that the, this is based on. If the person decides to give today, then uh, none of this matters. Um, so, uh, but, but if you decide today to give and something that's going to be implemented tomorrow, then today you get the utility from saying yes. Tomorrow you get the utility, the, the remaining utility, W minus Y, plus you got to pay the, for the good then, okay? pay your contribution then. So those, those are the two f flows of utility. So uh, you give now if my net utility from giving, W minus G, is greater than saying no. So this, you'll notice this, this could be a negative on the left-hand side because uh, my warm glow might not be enough to compensate for the loss of giving. I'll give later if uh, Y, this, I say yesterday, is plus the discounted utility I get from next period getting this net utility, W minus Y minus G, and that's greater than saying no today. Now if I rearrange this thing, I get this expression. The W minus G is greater than minus N minus this other thing that's a positive number. So you see, if I meet condition one, I will also meet condition two. 
But if I don't meet condition one, I might also meet condition two. So what this means is that we're going to have more people giving when you can promise now to give later. Okay? Very, very simple uh, result. What about pledges? Well, if you, uh, if you pledge now and you confirm, you get the, um, the utility W minus Y minus G. But if you renege, uh, you, you have, have to say no, so now you're going to get the minus N. But now you have to give back that yes, right? I, I enjoyed saying yes earlier. Now I can't let you keep that because you said no. So now you're going to feel, not, not only are you going to feel bad from saying no, you're going to feel bad because you, you said yes in the first place and you've allowed yourself to feel good about that. So you're going to feel, feel guilty. And this, so this is how we're going to capture that. So again, this is a way of conserving the utility so that you don't make money by changing your mind uh, endlessly. All right, so if you confirm, you get W minus G minus N, if, the, if that's greater than minus N. Um, if you rearrange that, it's W plus N is greater than G. That's the condition. So the probability that you confirm is the probability that W plus N is greater than G, which is a, a real simple thing to write down. So an individual will pledge. If, the, if you pledge, you get this utility. So if you confirm, you, you get one piece. If you renege, you get the other piece. Uh, you, play it, you confirm with probability P. Right. That's a little bit messy. Let's rearrange that. Uh, you, you pledge if U of P is greater than minus N. The utility is saying no right now. You arrange this. Oh, and I missed something here when I was editing this. should be something that says W here. This should say W minus G is greater than minus N. This is, the, this is the term we had last time. Now I add an extra minus negative thing on that. So now, again, if you met condition two, you're going to meet condition three. And if you didn't meet condition two, you might also meet, you might meet condition three. Okay, so now we're expanding the number of people who, are, who don't say no right away So uh, by, by allowing a pledge. Okay, but you might not follow through on this pledge, and that's, the, that's going to be the uh, key part. More people say yes in the pledge than in the give later, but many will renege on the final decisions. And we may or may not increase the, uh, total donations over the give now. So what if we have giving uh, a choice between pledging and giving now? So you just combine these two. You'll pledge if, you, if that's higher than either saying no or giving omit right away. You might give right away if that's higher than the others. So for someone who's almost sure to give tomorrow or follow through on a pledge, they're actually happier to give now because the risk of having to change your mind and say no and feel embarrassed is very small. I want that utility now. Get all that right now, and I'll enjoy that. So, so people who are likely to follow through on the pledges are also going to decide, just, I'm just going to do it now. Right? So you'll be able to scoop them in and prevent a small bit of people from slipping away. So you'll, you should collect more donations this way by adding this pledge or, or give now. So hypothesis one, decisions at, decisions at time t. Uh, pledging in the pledge is giver, higher than giving in the give later. Pledging plus giving, and you, know, you can read all this stuff. So uh, let's uh, see uh, what happened in the data. Oh, this is how we just restructured this. Uh, we asked, uh, would you like to donate? So in the first one, to give now. Would you like to donate to give directly? Uh, yes, I'd like to donate $5 today. No. Check one of those boxes. Uh, and give later. Uh, would you like to, give to donate to give directly? Yes, I'll donate $5 or no. And here we say, Yes, I'd like to donate five dollars. Ask me again next week, and I'll make my final make my final decision. Okay, so it's clear that you, yes, it's the same statement. Yes, I'll donate five dollars next week, but I'll make my decision final in a week. So it's it's clear that you're not totally uh, committed to, to doing this. In pledge or give now, you have those two choices together of uh, doing those. Okay, can reneging be curbed? We ask. So. It's well known by fundraisers that after somebody promises to make a contribution, you send them a thank you note. You show gratitude to them right away. Well, why does that work so well? Why do fundraisers think that's a great thing? Well, let's find out. So what we'll do is right after, right after the session, within a few hours, you're going to get an email if you've pledged and, and if, or if you gave today. You'll, get an, you'll, you'll, you'll be randomly assigned into the conditions where you get thank you emails. right? And uh, the thank you emails were one of two forms. One was what we call a weak, e weak thank you, which is just uh, a thank you for saying, yes, I'd like to donate $5. Next week, you can confirm your choice. And this one, we say some of the same things, except we say, you know, 
your, thank you for being a donor. This is here, your family in Kenya is going to be uh, made better off by what you did. Here's a picture of them, what they look like. This is supposed to heighten your sense of obligation, um, be a little stronger. The experiment, so we did the experiment at UCSD. We had 500 subjects. In week one, you, were, you got paid $6 to show up. Uh, and uh, week two, you got $20. 92% of the people showed up in week two, and the donation was either $5 or $0. So that, was, that value was set. Okay, so result one, fewer immediate no's when giving later. So this is our, our pr initial prediction. And if you can give later, you know, more people will say yes. And they do, and that's uh, a significant uh, change. Uh, if you go to the pledge, between pledge and pledge or pledge and give now, we predicted those two totals would be about the same. And here you, s you see they are. But we, get a s we do get a fair group of people who want to give now instead of pledge to the future. So they prefer the, the commitment to the uh, flexibility. Uh, we can look for these things for statistical significance to all these things and everything that we want to have statistical significance on we get, uh, those differences. Um, we control for some individual characteristics that we measured in our uh, other things that the subjects did in this, in this study, which tightened up our, our estimates. Uh, how often do individuals renege on their pledges? So here's where we just have a pledge. Here's where we have the pledge or give now treatment. Uh, what's the difference between these two? Well, the, the people who are pretty sure to give, to follow through on their pledges next period um, are out of this sample of people who are remaining for period two. So they're left with people who are less certain to, to follow through. So in fact, we see the number of people who follow through on their pledges or com confirm their pledges goes down. Right. Well, what about if, when we have the thank you? The, uh, here, the weak thank you the, is, not, is as significant, uh, but the strong thank you is even more significant. Uh, a little bit. Okay, so the thank you notes um, help reduce the re amount of reneging on your pledges. Okay, so the practitioners, they know what they're talking about. Um, and we'll, we'll try to figure out why this works. So uh, what's the effect on final donations? Uh, give later is higher than give now. Pledge or give now is higher than pledge. Okay, so we make more donations uh, by, uh, you don't lose any donations by asking for pledges, and especially if we have a give now option. We can make more money by pledge or give now rather than give now. Okay. And how do we break this out with, with, uh, by the thank you notes? And as you see, if you have in the pledge or give now, it's the fact that we had thank you notes that really get us the extra bounce. Okay, okay so donations increase when giving is later and uh, commitment with commitment or a thank you. Okay, so th again, this is, you can, See how the stars are right, all in the right spots here. Um, okay. So the thank you note, how does it affect the attitudes and emotions? So we also estimated, or asked some survey questions at the very end of the experiment, uh, measuring their attitudes about the, the charity, how much they like the charity, do they want to give, give some more? Um, do they regret their decision to pledge? Uh, did they feel pressure to donate? And here's what we found with the, then the, there really wasn't much difference except here, the strong thank you note made some people regret their decision. So why is that? They might have been people who uh, thought they were going to renege, but felt, uh, had their arms twisted a little bit. Because we got a little bit of extra feeling of pressure to donate by those same people. Okay, so they might have regretted their decisions. So if you have a too strong of a thank you note, it might, it might backfire in the long run, because you've made some people a little unhappy. They, but, but these are people you, that you got at least one donation out of them. You might not have gotten anything. <laughs> okay, um, is giving related to empathy or impulsivity? So empathy is something we want it to be related to. Impulsivity is something that people have suggested it's related to. We find that uh, empathy strongly predicts giving, but uh, impulsivity uh, does not. It, it, impulsivity influences pledging, but it also influences reneging. Right? So it's people who have trouble saying no. So they, they put that off for a week, and then they say no later. Okay. Uh, so we provide a theoretical framework, and we experimentally find that delaying the allocation of gifts can increase donations. The lack of commitment can be undone through a costless intervention, 
like a thank you note it, uh, to increase your attachment or uh, utility of, of, of uh, following through on your donation. So that's, that's for the first thank you, and then there's the... <laughs> Am I allowed to take questions? Okay, yes. That's a great experiment that somebody should do. Yes. Yeah, ask me again in about five months. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully sooner we'll have that answer for you. Yes, sir. So uh, if, if you make saying no really, I mean, well, so we, we kept every, the whole setting constant in the sense that uh, you, know, so you have to come back to the lab to say no. I mean, you, could, you could say no by not showing up for this study. And about 8% of the people did not show up. I don't know how many of those were pledgers or not. But um, so you could avoid through that means. Um, but that's expensive because you also don't get your 20 bucks the second time. If you, uh, like if you think about how things really would work in, in reality, if somebody calls me on the telephone, asks me to pledge, and they send me a bill, say, in six months or something, if I promise, like in the Chicago Booth School, I'm gonna, I'll give by the end of the year, maybe they'll send me a bill in December, at end of November, you know, you have till January 1st to pay your pledge. Um, so it's hard to know what the, di what the real difference is at that. That, that, that could be very strong, or it could be you know, very easy to just throw that away if you want. Uh, you know, so I don't really, if they called me on the phone to ask for a pledge, and then called me on the phone to ask me to, uh, I'll take your credit card number now. That's, that's more like what, we're, what we've done. But, uh, but, but again, I, I, I don't really have a good sense of, uh, I don't have, I don't have a, a, a real answer for you of knowing how that's going to differ. Uh, if they did not give any money away, they received $26. They got $6 on the first time and $20 on the second day. We really wanted them to come back. Yeah. That's the important thing. So we did give them more money on the second day. Yeah. So they just see it as, a, as just maybe a reduced payment mm -hmm. rather than transfer. Right. So yeah, so this was, a, this was a tough choice. So we could have made it, you know, $10 or whatever, split it equally on the two days. So we give them $13 each day, and they could have paid $5 out of that. Um, so that, that was a choice we made. We might want to go back and do what you suggested, having the same amount of money each day. Should we move to the next one? I'll, I'll have to catch you later. But thanks. <laughs>